Number 20. Virginia Valley Joe. Virginia Valley Joe is a woman from Colombia. She worked as a journalist and TV personality. People around the world noticed her because of her relationship with a famous drug lord named Pablo Escobar. She was born in 1949. At first, Virginia Valley Joe had a regular job as a journalist and news anchor. But in the 1980s, she became well-known in Colombian media. Her life changed a lot when she started dating Pablo Escobar. He was a powerful and rich criminal who led the Medellin cartel. He became known for being involved in drug trafficking, violence, and corruption. His actions caused a lot of problems in Colombian society. Pablo Escobar's reign ended in 1993, when he was killed by Colombian authorities. Even after his death, people remained fascinated by his criminal empire. Virginia Vallejo dated him from 1983 to 1987 and saw the violence and corruption connected to his drug business. After breaking up with Escobar, she helped the Colombian government investigate his crimes. She shared her experiences and testified about the extent of his criminal operations. In 2006, she wrote a memoir called Loving Pablo, Hating Escobar, which became a bestseller and was later turned into a movie. Virginia Vallejo's story shows the dangers of being in a high-profile relationship with someone involved in criminal activities. Her bravery in speaking out against Escobar's criminal empire has helped people understand the dark side of the drug trade and its impact on society. Number 19. Ruja Ignatova Ruja Ignatova, known as the Crypto Queen, is accused of being behind one of the biggest scams ever. She created a fake cryptocurrency called OnCoin and is accused of fraud. Despite being on the run since 2017 and being on the FBI's most wanted list since June 2022, she has managed to avoid capture. It seems having a lot of money helps in hiding. She's been chased by law enforcement worldwide, but she continues to stay hidden. This is not a suggestion to commit crimes for money. I don't support illegal activities. Let's move on. Number 18. Shanika Minor. Shanika Minor, an American criminal, became well known for doing a very bad thing. She shot and killed a pregnant woman. Because of this, the FBI put her on their list of 10 most wanted criminals. In June 2016, they added her name to the list for crimes like purposely killing someone, purposely killing an unborn baby, and running away to avoid getting in trouble. She was the 10th woman ever to be on the FBI's 10 most wanted criminals list. Number 17. Brenda Delgado. Brenda Delgado did a very bad thing. She planned and did a murder in 2015. Her victim was Kendra Hatcher, who was dating Brenda's ex-boyfriend. Brenda got really upset about this and decided to do something very wrong. After Brenda broke up with her ex-boyfriend Ricky, she became obsessed with him and Kendra. She followed them and watched them all the time. Then, Brenda made a plan to kill Kendra. She hired a person called Christopher Love to do the murder. He shot Kendra in the garage of her apartment building in Dallas. People found out Brenda was involved because a black jeep she borrowed was seen on cameras at the crime scene. Brenda ran away to Mexico, but investigators caught her. She was sent to prison for life. The person who did the murder and the one who helped Brenda escape got different punishments. One was sentenced to death, and the other got 35 years in prison. Number 16. Shante Henderson In 2007, Shante Henderson was put on the FBI's most wanted list. This is a really bad situation. People on this list usually did very bad things. Henderson shot and killed Devendra Parker in September 2006 in Kansas City, Missouri. She said Parker was trying to run her over with a truck. In March 2007, she was put on the most wanted list. They caught her on the same day after she ran away for months. The judge in the court case didn't find her guilty of murder, but they found her guilty of manslaughter. She got parole, but later she was caught with drugs and a gun, which were against the rules of her parole. She was then sent to prison for 17 years. This story shows that some people don't learn from their mistakes. But you can learn something positive by clicking the subscribe button to get more great videos in the future. Also, give this video a thumbs up. 
Number 15. Donagene Wilmet. In 1987, Donagene Wilmet became one of the people the FBI wanted the most. Before that, in 1986, she and her partner Claude Daniel Marx are accused of being involved in a complicated plan to destroy a high-security prison in Kansas. The plan was not just about blowing up the prison, it was also part of a bigger scheme to cause confusion at the prison. They wanted to take advantage of the chaos and use a helicopter to rescue the leader of a Puerto Rican group called the FALN. After doing this, they ran away and stayed hidden for many years. Finally, in December 1994, they turned themselves in. It was later revealed that during those years, they were living in Chicago using fake names, Joe Elliott and Greg Peters. Number 14. Catherine Ann Power She was born in 1949 and got involved in political activities during the 1960s and early 1970s, a time of big changes. She joined a group called the Weather Underground, which protested against the Vietnam War and wanted big changes. In 1970, things took a serious turn when she helped rob a bank in Brighton, Massachusetts. A police officer died during the robbery. After that, she did and became one of the most wanted people in the U.S. for more than 10 years. She lived secretly, using different names to avoid getting caught. In 1993, she decided to give herself up and take responsibility for what she did. She went to prison but was released on parole in 1999 after serving six years. Since then, she has been speaking out for social justice and sharing her experiences. She works with groups that focus on changing the criminal justice system, protecting human rights, and promoting nonviolence. Catherine's life is a complicated part of American history. Her journey from being a strong activist to a fugitive and then back to being a part of society helps us understand why people do extreme things in politics. Number 13. Susan Edith Sachs in 1970, Susan Edith Sachs was put on the FBI's most wanted list because she was involved in a robbery, just like her friend Catherine. They were both part of the Weather Underground group. Unlike Catherine, Susan was caught in 1975 and stayed on the wanted list for five years. She was also a student at a local university. Susan, along with Catherine and others, had escaped from a bank robbery. During the escape, a police officer was shot and killed by William Guild, one of the ex-convicts in their group. After the escape, Susan went into hiding for five years until she was finally caught in Philadelphia. The FBI had shared her photo, and someone recognized her, leading to her arrest on the same day. Susan went to trial and ended up serving five years in prison. Number 12. Marie Dean Arrington in 1969, Marie Dean Arrington became the second woman ever on the FBI's 10 Most Wanted Fugitives list. She was put there because she was sentenced to death for killing Vivian Ritter, who was a legal secretary. Ritter had helped Arrington's kids in a case, but the public defender didn't do well, and Arrington wanted revenge. She was put in prison to be executed, but she escaped in 1969 by cutting a window screen wearing pajamas. She was caught again in 1972, got 10 more years in prison, and her death sentence changed to life. She died at 80 in 2014 in the same prison where she escaped. Number 11. Three women robbed a bank. In 2011, three women were accused of stealing money from a bank in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. One of them worked at the TCF Bank in Milwaukee. This woman, Alexandra Lay, and her two friends, Sheena Liancy and Tara Macklin, came up with a plan to rob the bank. The plan was good, and they almost got away with it. Alexandra Lay was at work when her friends robbed the bank and took $100,000. Yancy, dressed in black, entered the bank and announced the robbery. Lay had told Yancy how to avoid the bank's security measures, and Yancy took all the cash bundles, except one that could trigger an alarm. Macklin waited outside and drove the getaway car. This inside job helped them escape for nearly a month. However, one of them started bragging about the crime, and that's when the police figured things out. Eventually, all the women were arrested. Number 10. 
Asata Shaker. Asata Shaker was once known as Joan de Boer Byron, but she later got married and took the name Chesimard. She is an American activist and was part of the Black Panther Party and the Black Liberation Army in the 1970s. Shekhar spent time in different prisons. In 1979, she escaped and became a fugitive. After avoiding authorities for many years, she found safety in Cuba. In 1984, she was granted political asylum there. In May 2005, the FBI labeled her as a domestic terrorist and offered a $1 million reward for information leading to her capture. In 2013, she became the first woman on the FBI's most wanted terrorist list. In June 2017, the New Jersey Attorney General matched the FBI's reward, making it a total of $2 million for her capture. In a speech in 2017, then-President Donald Trump talked about changing the US's Cuba policy and mentioned Shaker, referring to her as a cop killer and expressing a desire to have her returned. Number 9. Bernardine Dorn Bernardine Dorn was a leader of a group called the Weather Underground. This group was active in the United States during the late 1960s and 1970s. They were part of the anti-war and civil rights movements. The Weather Underground wanted to violently change what they thought was a bad American government. They targeted government buildings and banks with bombings and sabotage. The group believed in using force to bring about a revolution. They were inspired by similar movements in other parts of the world. They didn't like the mainstream anti-war movement because they thought it wasn't making real change. The Weather Underground disbanded in the late 1970s, with many members giving up or hiding. Bernardine Dorn was one of the leaders. She was charged with planning bombings in Michigan. She was on the run until 1980 when she turned herself in. By then, many charges against her had been dropped. She spent a year in prison for the remaining charges. After that, she became a lawyer in Chicago. Later on, she started the Children and Family Justice Center at Northwestern University. Even though the Weather Underground's actions were controversial and widely condemned, people still debate whether political violence is okay for making social change and how much disagreement is acceptable. Number 8. Angela Davis Angela Yvonne Davis is a well-known person who has done a lot of important things in activism, teaching, and social justice. She was born in 1944 and became famous during the civil rights movement. Angela is known for working really hard to make sure people are treated equally, especially in areas like race, prisons, and gender. She has taught at big universities and written many books that talk about how race, class, and gender are connected in unfair systems. In the 1970s, Angela faced some legal trouble because people said she was involved in a big court case. People from all over the world supported her, and she became famous for her political activism. Angela has always spoken out against putting too many people in jail and has fought for the rights of prisoners. She also works to challenge racism in big systems and cares about how different types of oppression overlap in society. Throughout her life, Angela Davis has stayed true to making the world fair. Her work in civil rights, feminist theory, and getting rid of prisons has had a big impact. She inspires many people to keep working for justice and equality. Number 7. Ruth Eisman Scheer Ruth Eisman Scheer was born in Honduras. Her dad, an Austrian Jew who escaped from the Nazis, found refuge there. She studied at the National University of Mexico and later at the University of Miami's Institute of Marine Science. In 1968, she met Gary Stephen Christ. Together, they kidnapped Barbara Jane Mackle for ransom. This made them both wanted by the law. Christ was caught in two days, but Shear managed to escape for 79 days. She was eventually arrested in Norman, Oklahoma in March 1969. She was extradited to Georgia for trial, where she admitted guilt and got a seven-year prison sentence. In prison, Jim Miller and Mackle wrote a book called 83 Hours Till Dawn about the crime. Cher got parole in 1973 after serving four years, but she had to go back to Honduras. Number 6. Julianne Dimitrian 
Julianne Dimitrian and her husband John Dimitrian were wanted by the police for doing bad things. They were accused of lying about buying houses and cheating people out of their money. This happened in February 2010. They said sorry for what they did. They tricked people that were having a hard time with their homes. Instead of helping them, they used the money for themselves to buy expensive things like clothes, lingerie, bags and shoes. The FBI found out that the last time anyone saw them was at a church in Ahu in July 2010. When it was time for them to go to court and get punished, they didn't show up. The police then started looking for them. It seems like they left their car behind, and there's no record of them being on any regular flights. The police are offering a reward of $10,000 for anyone who can help catch them. Number 5. Eva Zametnikova in 2015, a court in Slovakia sent Czech businesswoman Eva Z to prison for nine years. They believed she was involved in a plan to murder her husband. It was said that Eva wanted her husband killed with the help of a friend named Martin, whom she offered 50,000 euros. Martin, however, reported the plan to the police and became the main witness against her. At that time, Eva had been married for only two months. The suspicion was that she wanted her husband to disappear so that, after two years, she could declare him dead and take control of his assets. Eva pleaded not guilty. Her defense was that even if she had paid the hitman, she would have only gained about 30,000 euros. According to her, this amount wasn't enough to justify the killing. She claimed that either Martin or her husband were actually conspiring against her. Number 4. Andrea Dubla Andrea Dubla did a lot of bad things in Hungary, like making fake documents, laundering money, and tricking people. She was in trouble with the law for more than 10 years, and the police really wanted to catch her. She was one of the most wanted criminals in Europe. But finally, the police caught her at the airport in Madrid, Spain. Both Spain and the Dominican Republic worked together to find her. They discovered she was hiding in the Dominican Republic, using a fake name, Esther Katha, and pretending to live a normal life in Punana. Duda was good at cheating people, especially in banking and credit fraud. In 2012, she and two others got over 2 million euros illegally. They tried to make it look legal by creating fake companies, but it didn't work. In March 2023, after being on the run for 10 years, Dubla was caught by the police. Number 3. Rosita Vilches Rosita Vilches was a person from Peru who did bad things with real estate. In 2015, she was punished for her crimes. She did bad things for about 10 years, hurting many people. In 2012, she was charged with a crime in a big court for lying about banks. Then, she was taken to the United States in 2015, where she admitted to leading a big plan to cheat people in the Northern Virginia Hispanic community. This plan happened from 2005 to 2007 and made about $7.4 million in a bad way, causing more than $15 million in losses to banks. Rosita Vilches admitted to planning with others to lie about banks and cheat a financial institution. She had a real estate company, a title insurance company, and a part of a loan business in Manassas, Virginia. She used these businesses to do her bad plan. Vilches and her friends gave fake papers to get loans for people to buy homes. Vilches's companies got money for each home sold, making about 6% of the selling price. Vilches and her friends targeted Hispanic clients who couldn't speak English well. These clients often couldn't read the papers for their loans, and they didn't know that false information was given to banks on their behalf. Because of the lies, these people got loans they couldn't really pay back, and many lost their homes. In December 2015, Vilches could have gone to jail for up to 30 years. Number 2. Hazel Head. In 1998, a woman named Deanna Ray tricked a man named Charles Barker to a fake ad in a Louisiana newspaper. Charles was a retired trucker who had lost his wife and got some money from insurance. Deanna moved in with him, but Charles's daughter Jennifer figured out Deanna's true plan. Charles also became suspicious, and when he told his concerns to his daughter Cindy, she disappeared, cutting off contact with the family. 
Worried, Jennifer asked her aunt to check on Charles. Sadly, they found Charles dead with a gunshot wound to the head. Diana, along with Charles's money and car, was gone. Later investigations revealed that Diana's real name was Hazel Leota Head. She was a serial con artist with a history of using different names and committing crimes. She had a warrant for her arrest in Nebraska for arson. After the murder, she managed to escape capture, and the last confirmed sighting of her was in December 1998 in Colorado. Hazel Leota Head, born on December 10, 1949, is still on the run. She is in her 70s, with blonde hair, green eyes, and distinctive features like a scar near her right eye and a gap between her front teeth. Head is known to hang around truck stops and relies on hitchhiking for transportation. Number 1. Amparo Altagracia Montes Hernandez A woman named Amparo Altagracia Montes Hernandez, also known as Iris, and her son Eddie Vasquez are wanted by the police. They are accused of helping illegal immigrants and running away from the law. Hernandez is accused of running a brothel in southwest Florida, where she forced people from Latin America to work as prostitutes to pay off debts to human smugglers who brought them to the United States. The FBI says these people are really bad human traffickers and should be punished for the suffering they caused. Hernandez and her son ran away after being charged in August 2005, and now there are arrest warrants for them. They are from the Dominican Republic and have connections to New York and Boston. It's a mix of real criminals and some people who are fighting for important social causes. This shows that some crimes can be political and people's opinions can change. Which of these wanted women interested you the most? Let me know in the comments below. Check out other interesting things on the screen and I'll see you next time.